Greetings and welcome to Arcana Analysis, where we invite you into the Velvet Room to unlock the secrets of the Arcanum and the bonds they encompass. On this episode of Arcana Analysis, we'll be exploring the Emperor Arcana. The Emperor bears the Roman numeral 4 and follows the Empress. The Emperor is the patriarch of the tarot deck. He is a respected and upstanding individual. As a ruler, he represents the importance of clear thought and logical decision making. Though the Emperor reminds us to keep a cool, rational mind, make no mistake, he bears great force and power which he can unleash at his discretion. There is an aura of deep, masculine energy in this card. Though it often precedes challenges and difficult decisions, the Emperor reminds us that hard work and dedication can bring us to a happy outcome. In the Persona series, the Emperor represents characters of some authority or renown. They are strong and compassionate, dedicated to their work and passions. Emperors are always male, and tend to be core party members who join the group in early to mid-game. Emperors take on the role of caretaker or protector of the rest of the team, willingly throwing themselves into the fray when those close to them are in trouble. Despite the loyalty they show to others, Emperors often have patriarchal figures in their life who have failed or hurt them in some way, leaving them with anxieties and baggage in their present lives. While they are sometimes hot-headed, rash, and a bit out of touch with their emotions, they are ultimately well-meaning. Within Persona 3, the Emperor Social Link belongs to Hidetoshi Odagiri. Hidetoshi is a strict and serious member of Gekukan High School's disciplinary community. He believes that sticking to the laws set in place is the best way to gain and maintain just power. The protagonist is first introduced to him by Mitsudo at a student council meeting, and from here, Hidetoshi enrolls the protagonist in a number of missions to enact justice within the school. When a cigarette butt is found in the men's washroom, Hidetoshi makes it his priority to find the culprit by any means necessary. This manifests in cruel accusations and assumed guilt, and his aggression towards the student body results in animosity from his peers which Hidetoshi acknowledges and accepts as the price of his justice. Through his social link, it's revealed that Hidetoshi's father was used as a scapegoat and ended up in jail at some point in this emperor's childhood. The lack of justice in the sentence scarred Hidetoshi, causing him to believe that trusting others will only result in him being used or backstabbed. His current quest for power stems from a desire to prevent abuses such as this from happening, but it's ironically clear that his aggressive search for the culprit is creating a similar sort of harm. As the link continues, Hidetoshi assembles a list of suspects, to which one teacher attempts to add the protagonist. Despite some evidence suggesting that the protagonist could be the responsible party, Hidetoshi refuses to acknowledge these rumors, stating that, even if the whole school turns on me, I won't sell you out. Hidetoshi suddenly realizes the bond he's developed with the protagonist, and acknowledges the trust they share. Now more in touch with his connections to others, Hidetoshi turns over a new leaf and begins to trust the students of Gekukan High and double down on his commitment to serving them. With this change of heart, not only do Hidetoshi's peers warm up to him, but the original culprit even comes forward to confess his crimes. Ultimately, Hidetoshi shows a strong belief that logic must overcome emotion, a prevailing theme within the Emperor Arcana. But his refusal to trust based on his father's past shows that his reason is far more clouded by emotion than even he knows. By the end of the link, the disciplinarian can see much more clearly thanks to the protagonist's help, and works to maintain order as a far more benevolent official. Much like the Magician Arcana, the Emperor is held by two characters within Persona 3. The second Emperor and a core party member within the game is Akihiko Sonata. He is introduced to the protagonist during the very first Full Moon mission, but due to his recklessness, he is injured and out of commission for several months. On the surface, Akihiko presents as calm and stoic, a pillar of strength within Cease. This strength is no joke, as he also holds a fiery passion within him, one that is brought out in the heat of battle. It's these same traits that make Akihiko an exceptional captain of the boxing team, a skill that proves to be very useful when facing against shadows. Despite acting cool and collected the majority of the time, Akihiko is shown to be quite kind to his peers. For all intents and purposes, he is a big brother to the other members of Cease, going above and beyond to protect his family. 
This desire to protect others initially stems from the loss of his sister, Miki, when she was quite young. Akihiko blames himself for his sister's death and, as such, resolves to get stronger in order to keep from losing anyone ever again. Unfortunately, Akihiko is only human, and he cannot save everyone. Shinjiro Aragaki, a former member of CIS, is much like a brother to Akihiko. The two were raised in the same orphanage and grew close to one another as a result. Even as Shinji quits CIS, Akihiko refuses to give up on him, keeping in contact and continually urging him to rejoin the team. When Shinji does inevitably join the party, it's rather short-lived, as he is murdered by Takaya Sakaki only a month after rejoining. Having lost what was essentially another family member, Akihiko has every right to feel devastated. He feels as if he's failed again, and jumps to blame his weakness for the tragedy and further collapse inward. However, he turns this pain into resolve, realizing that he cannot continue dwelling in the past, and that even though some things are beyond his control, he can continue trying to protect and care for the people he loves. By looking forward instead of behind him, Akihiko can see much clearer now. He knows that strength isn't everything, and he needs to pay attention to emotional pain as well, which helps him reach Ken in his time of need. His hard-working and strong demeanor is quite indicative of the Emperor Arcana, but it is the wisdom he gains following Shinji's death that allows Akihiko to become a fully realized Emperor. He is no longer dominated by guilt and insecurity, and instead can think clearly, becoming a greater asset to the team as a whole. This transition from brutal, emotional strength to a more refined and wizened state is reflected well in his persona evolution. His initial persona, Polydeuces, takes the form of a man in heavy armor, coated in metal plating. On his right arm, Polydeuces wields a powerful, spear-like weapon. Besides its offensive traits, Polydeuces hasn't much else to offer. In fact, most of its other features are quite muted. Its face is mostly obscured by its chest plate, and its other extremities, such as its hands and feet, are shrunk down and heavily stylized. Simply put, Polydeuces is not good for much else except fighting. Its evolved form, Caesar, is shown to be far more well-rounded. It is dressed as a Roman warrior, with a sword and globe in hand. The persona also has a smaller, humanoid idol deep within its chest, sitting in deep contemption. While Caesar is still well equipped for battle, both the globe and idol indicate that this persona is far wiser than its previous incarnation, mirroring Akihiko's growth. Another interesting tidbit, the color scheme for Caesar appears to be a blend of both Castor and Polydeuces, illustrating that not only has Akihiko grown thanks to Shinji, but a little part of him lives on inside Akihiko. Kanji Tatsumi is a terrifying figure first introduced as the singular bane of a local biker gang. Though only a first year at Yasugami High, he's already earned a dangerous reputation for his berserker-like rage and strength. The protagonist and pals are fearful of him in the beginning, but eventually come to realize that he only looks scary. Under the surface, he's a passionate and caring person who just has a bit of trouble displaying his emotions. Kanji's outer appearance and conduct is a direct result of the way his peers treated him at an early age. The truth is, Kanji has always had a love for cute and stereotypically feminine things. He enjoys knitting and sewing and has a weakness for soft, fluffy animals. When he expressed this to other children, they rejected him. Girls because he was a boy, and boys because he liked girly things. Feeling that he could never be himself, he decided instead to act out a hyper-masculine role. Kanji's anxieties also stem from confusion and fear over his sexuality. He's strongly implied to have an attraction to men. He feels that this further separates him from what he should be as a man. He buries this alongside his confliction until he's forced to face his shadow. After the dust settles, Kanji finds himself wholly accepted by a group of his peers for the first time. He's immediately grateful to them, and quickly becomes an adamant friend to everyone in the investigation team. Kanji makes it his mission to protect his friends and support them in any way he can. He doesn't always know how to articulate this, so though his care often comes across aggressively, his whole heart is still behind it. Through Kanji's social link, the protagonist learns that prior to his father's death, Kanji was told, if you're a man, you have to become strong. The meaning behind his words troubled Kanji deeply. 
feeding into his forced adherence to an aggressive gender role. As Kanji grows throughout Persona 4, he comes to understand that the true meaning behind his father's words might not match his initial interpretation. Kanji learns to love himself and his talents, seeing how much good can come from them and knowing that his friends will accept him no matter what. Under the leather and studs, he's a truly selfless friend who they all can depend on. Kanji's persona, Take Mikazuchi, uses lightning magic, but has a focus on devastating physical attacks. This not only reflects Kanji's real-life beef, but also his perception of masculinity. As it evolves into Dairoku Tenmao and Takeji Zaiten, it gains a more and more regal appearance. This reflects Kanji's growth into a more stable emperor, possessing great power and understanding how to use it for the forces of good. Persona 5's emperor comes in the form of Yusuke Kitagawa, who is the first new member of the Phantom Thieves after the team's founding. Unlike his predecessors, Yusuke does not present as a gruff, masculine brawler. He is instead a passionate artist dominated by a desire to find and create things that please his sense of aesthetics. He is a rather odd duck, his eccentricities likely a result of his sheltered upbringing. Despite this, he is still a level-headed individual, showing a surprising amount of wit during his time as a phantom thief. Yusuke is quick to scold his fellow thieves for their mistakes, showing his desire to keep their endeavors tight and ordered. All that being said, Yusuke is capable of a great deal of kindness and understanding, supporting his fellow thieves in a variety of different ways. When the thieves first meet Yusuke, he is acting as an apprentice to Madarame, whom he admires and sees as a father figure. Unfortunately, the feeling isn't mutual, and upon entering Madarame's palace, the young artist discovers that his master only wishes to cash in on his success. Devastated by this revelation, Yusuke works alongside the Phantom Thieves to take down his mentor, in order to expose the greed that had corrupted his heart. At the end of the palace, it is revealed that the Sayuri, the painting that had inspired Yusuke to become an artist, was actually painted by his late mother, and meant to represent the love she had for her son. Following his separation from Madarame, the young artist vows never to let money or fame corrupt his artistic integrity, remaining pure and painting simply for the love of the art form. He struggles with this during his social link, however, falling into a slump not too long after leaving Madarame. He searches far and wide for something truly aesthetically pleasing to paint, even delving deep into mementos for inspiration, but comes up empty. He admits to the protagonist that he fears his pursuit of aesthetics may lead him down a similar path as Madarame, and with all the conflicted feelings welling up inside of him, his judgement has become clouded and his mind uncertain. He is utterly terrified of allowing his work to become corrupted by greed, refusing patronage of an association meant to support young artists, and viewing his craving for praise as a sin that's destroying his creations. With the help of the protagonist, Yusuke is able to get through his emotional crisis and reassess his interpretation of beauty. He manages to create a piece of art he feels truly proud of, and accepts that the desire for validation he feels is natural. With the success of this new painting, Yusuke feels his passion reignited for the first time since breaking free of his mentor. While Yusuke may not share the same overwhelming masculine energy as the other emperors, he is diligent and dedicated in both his art and his work as a phantom thief. Such resolve, coupled with his surprising capacity for introspection, makes Yusuke an excellent fit for the Emperor Arcana. Much like Madarame, Yusuke shows a deep appreciation of traditional Japanese art. This is also present in the design of his initial persona, Goemon. While beautiful, the aesthetics present on this persona are clearly heavily inspired by his time with Madarame and the art style he was trained in. Goemon is clothed in an elegant robe of many different colors and patterns, but this is ultimately a facade used to appear luxurious and elegant. Yusuke's evolved persona, Kamu Susano, shows a far more genuine beauty. It exposes its body and, in turn, its truth to the world, with his skin being covered in intricate, jagged tattoos. All in all, the raw, intense energy exuded by this persona is reminiscent of Desire and Hope, Yusuke's first successful painting after separating from Madarame. 
If Goemon is meant to represent his ties to his mentor, Kamu Susano represents Yusuke's true passion for art. It is powerful, burning hot like a raging fire while still showing an impressive mastery over snow and ice. This intimidating masculine figure is a fitting persona for the Emperor Arcana. That concludes our examination of the Emperor Arcana. Though the members of this Arcana have been shown to be brash, overbearing, and, at times, rather aggressive, they are ultimately sensible individuals with keen minds and full hearts. These strong, masculine figures provide careful insight, while also working hard to uphold the rules and maintain order, making the Emperor a reliable strategist and a formidable foe on the battlefield. We hope you've enjoyed your stay with us in the Velvet Room, and we look forward to seeing you again. Until then, we bid you adieu.